with a heart of gratitude. Our God is indescribable. Please bear with me, I'm a worshiper. His name is hallowed in the firmament. He's a price of a lamb through space and time. Our God is indescribable. His name is hallowed in the firmament. He's a pass of a lamb through space and time. Join me, sing it. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin but never end. It is our appreciation. Oh, from the pages of my heart. God of all flesh, yes, he's my God, yes, my God, God. and his name is Yahweh, his name is Yahweh, his name is Yahweh, Yahweh, yes, he's my God, Yes, it's my God. presence is already mighty among us and I know that whenever we gather he shows up yesterday I was reminding us and I was making random random um, random teachings and random points of sensitive and important aspects of the supernatural which we need not to neglect I was emphasizing that much of God can be going on in a place and one can, may not be aware of it. But again, I also want to strengthen that point I made yesterday that the supernatural doesn't have to be spectacular always. Do you remember that? God can be doing something in the quietness of life, in the quietness of the day, yet it is the supernatural at work. Someone can sit quietly and not no special thing happened and it is still the supernatural at work. So sometimes understand and realize that the spectacular dimensions and activity, as good as it is, that's not the only option. That's not only the end of the spiritual. Let's keep it here. Let's keep it here. God bless you. And so I'd like you to understand that many times the Lord leaves, he begins a thing, but leaves the remaining for process. Just lay hand on your chest. And let's let's re re restrengthen that word of prayer. Say, Father, everything you have reserved for process in my life, don't let me miss it. Don't let me miss them. Can you go ahead and declare that? Go ahead and declare that. Don't let me miss them. Whatever He has reserved for process, don't let me miss them. The supernatural is both simple and spectacular. And all operates together. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. So this morning there is a burden in my heart to still raise other sensitive points also concerning the operations of the supernatural. The signature of the supernatural. The signature of the supernatural. The reason is because whenever the supernatural season opens up upon people the enemy and the kingdom of darkness is provoked they are really provoked to great anger and i can tell you that the devil will do everything possible to hijack a supernatural move of god are you listening to me yes he wants to hijack it and he wouldn't he wouldn't spare it 
but like i said that the supernatural doesn't have to be spectacular always even though that's you can hear of spectacular and great things that happens as a mark of the supernatural move or dimensions of god you could hear people talk about how they've had encounters with god that is very strange i saw how they see i you know someone can say i saw angel and i saw the presence of god god can even speak in audible voice and languages inscriptions come to, just like what was happening yesterday those are like the spectacular dimensions of the supernatural move of god but i can tell you that even when that is not happening the supernatural can still be in process are you are you understanding me even when all of that is not even in place it's not happening now you have a meeting you had a meeting everywhere is quiet and you're just talking and you're just listening and all of that the supernatural is still at work so i am emphasizing that when people talk like that that's how god encountered them and how how they saw great things the holy ghost came angels spoke with them those those who talk like that way they, they didn't get there overnight are you listening to me they didn't get there overnight they went through process in the book of of first samuel in chapter 3 and in verse 7 uh, the bible said that now samuel did not yet know the lord if you look at first samuel chapter 3 this was a prophet this was a man whom had already heard the, had the voice of god the voice of god in verse 3 had already aroused him from sleep he had already heard god three times and had already met the elder eli he had already woken awoken the elder eli like i said yesterday so an older generation had already had already come into the revival so both the new and the old have been awoken by the voice of god and the old played their role of bringing counsel to the new so that the new can align themselves properly to what the lord is doing and i used that yesterday to point out to you what god is doing now that he's using the new younger ones to wake everyone up together so the old rather than get intimidated or feel feeling significant or try to intimidate or harass the new no your responsibility in this move is bring counsel bring counsel like ally hallelujah just bring counsel and the fire will be up together but in verse 7 even after Eli had spoken to him and Samuel had returned to the Lord and had told the Lord master speak for thy servant hear it waiting for thy great command and God had finished speaking to him in verse 7 scripture still went on to say now Samuel did not yet know the Lord neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him then I asked myself what what then was God what then did he hear what then was the voice he understood when eli told him that was god's voice and he went back and said master speak for thy servant hear it what then did he hear? i just realized that you can hear what has not yet been revealed what i mean is that you can get an understanding but that understanding has not yet become an experience are you understanding me now so there is an understanding that god is bringing to this through this conference that the revelation of it the experience of it is going to happen from now until next years of the next year's pineal so i told you to guard your 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 life jealously look at your friend tap him say guard your life jealously so that the understanding can become experience that the information can become an experience this is how god moves that's how god moves the first encounters he will give you is by the way of information and so you will have the word but if the bible said in verse 7 that the word of the lord was not yet revealed to samuel then it means that he has heard but he has not understood or he has heard it is not yet an experience my prayer is that whatever you hear and whatever you've heard in this meeting in the process of time this have become practical experiences in your life you want to say amen you shout aloud amen and so when i when i saw all that has happened in verse 7 and you look at it down to verse 19 and verse 20 you discover that scripture said in verse 19 and samuel grew and samuel grew and the lord was with him the lord was with him and he did not let any of his word fall to the ground so before samuel could come to the point where everything he spoke was confirmed the bible said he grew he grew into it so there is there is a place for growth lift up your hand say lord speed up my growth i can't hear you say lord speed up my growth there's a place for growth and samuel grew again what what struck my heart in a very special way was what the bible said in verse 20 at the word of the lord 
have not yet i mean that the word of samuel never fell to the ground but in verse 20 the bible said again and all israel from dan even unto Beersheba, knew that samuel was established to be a prophet to be a prophet of the lord to be i said ah i read from king james and i am wondering because even at this chapter one he has not fully become yet even in this chapter one in chapter in this chapter three that it seems as if this this young man has had already hit the climax of of the supernatural the the bible is still saying that he he has been established to be so there were still greater things ahead of him to become oh may i not be that generation that see a little a little dimension of god and feel that that is all that that's all there is in god may we become that people that always believe that there is something more to be lift up your hand say oh god may i have that to be consciousness it is something that must be resident in your spirit always always i began to realize that it was how god took this young man and began to make because i'm looking at samuel as an example in scripture that we all should follow and i saw that in that verse 21 the bible began to make it clear that the man samuel the lord appeared again unto him in shiloh and revealed himself and revealed himself to samuel in shiloh by the word of the lord he appeared again unto him in shiloh and revealed himself to samuel by the word of the lord then i understood in verse 7 that verse 7 was not an error verse 7 was not an error neither was it kind of what we call parallelism or a repetition or emphasis no there was something that was called revelation by the word of the lord that samuel was yet to encounter because in verse 7 the word of the lord was not yet revealed unto him but in verse 21 even after he had seen the lord he had entered into the supernatural though his words no longer fall to the ground yet he is established not a prophet already made or completed but it is still in the process of a prophet to be israel from dan to Beersheba had become convinced that he is real a great man yet god is still saying there are other things in him to be and in verse 21 the bible said and this time god revealed appeared again again so he had appeared before he had appeared before so he appeared again he appeared again may i not be satisfied may i not be satisfied until i wake up in thy likeness just close your eyes lift up your hands until my only gaze is you spirit keep brooding over me till i look more like you that was what apostle paul said until my only gaze is you spirit keep brooding over me till i look more like you Apostle Paul said it clearly. He said, All these things you think I have, I have apprehended, I counted losses. It is not, a, it is to me as though I have not started. Because I am keeping focus to that for which I have been apprehended. And he said, I set my goal and I pursue. These things I lay aside and I may get what is ahead. As you leave this conference and as we come to a close, realize that the supernatural is like a river, it is like a spectrum, it's like a river, it keeps flowing. There are depths and depths that is still available to go in God. Everything about God is, is not possible to be fathomed and captured in few minutes or few moments or even few years. I can tell you that all of your life is not enough to capture him. Are you listening to what I'm saying this morning? It's not enough to capture him. The more I know you, is the more i want to know sing it g sing it that's a prayer let's pray with a song yes the more i know you oh yes is the more i want to know that's how you know the supernatural generation that's how you know them more of you 
I want more of you. I want more of you. Oh, oh, oh. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, more is the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 5 and in verse 14, because when the Bible said, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord, I began to understand that for Samuel to come to this realm, where he became powerful he walked into the supernatural by the virtue of exercise it was he was not by the virtue of anything else he grew he heard the lord he heard again he asked questions he was instructed and then his life was going in that process so i found out in the book of hebrew in chapter 5 and in verse 14 the bible said that strong food belongs to them that are full of age full of age that's the mark of growth the bible said that even those who by reason of use and ex an exercise have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil they've exercised their senses to discern both good and evil so i want to make that emphasis that some people walk into the supernatural not by virtue of anything else but by exercise not by virtue of anything otherwise but by exercise yielding their lives and spirit constantly in process that's why i want to pray for you this morning that what the lord shall lay upon your life is the grace for consistency if you want to say amen shout a loud amen the supernatural cannot be exhausted in one moment of encounter that is very heavy and very odious no that's just an ignition it is like sparking it's like just an ignition that's just like a kindling of the flame no matter how mighty a meeting is just like yesterday the lord had a mighty outpouring upon us and it was so sudden and no one can doubt it no one can doubt it all of us came to an understanding that the lord had visited if we had called people yesterday to give testimonies you would have seen the miracles that took place are you listening to what i'm saying but with such visitation the bible called it the kindling of the flame it's just the, it's just a spark of kingdom and the rest of the burnings that will bring forth a wilderness and can set a whole forest ablaze and can cause territories to be taken it takes time and process whereby a man can keep himself pure and consistently walk the way of the supernatural for years until he comes to the place of fullness whereby exercise exercise he has trained himself and his spirit to discern to discern between what is good and what is evil lift up your hand and say oh lord i can't hear you lift up your hand and say oh lord strengthen my spirit in the journey of the supernatural i have learned it clearly in scripture jesus christ was speaking to his disciples and he made us to understand that god that supernatural comes in various dimensions and that's why I want to point these things. I feel they are important because it's, it's like a burden in my heart. One thing I have learned is that the Anglican communion had exposed me to the reading of the Bible. If you're a good Anglican, you must be Bible worded. Because every Sunday you read at least three to four scriptures in church. Am I correct? Every Sunday, at least three to four scriptures. First lesson, second lesson. If it's, if it's on a communion day service, you read, you read an epistle and a gospel. The psalm, you will chant it. I mean... I mean you can't if you are really paying attention going through this for a few years if there is anything it can do for you at least i know one it did for me it made my head resident in scripture am i talking to someone this morning well don't buy them i know i'm not being denominational here but i just want to bring out the point that anytime you come to meetings please it's an opportunity also for you to get into scripture your soul get into scripture so people come to church and they just sit down and listen to the man of God. He, he quotes scripture you may not have been, maybe not writing or not going through to read for yourself. Sometimes you, you keep searching, searching, read for yourself. Sometimes you keep searching. As you're reading for yourself, the impressions have been made. Everything is going into your spirit. And with time, the supernatural in you grows. Are you understand what I'm trying to say? 
we are trying to mobilize everything that makes the supernatural possible so that you will not be anything less from now other than the supernatural i am praying that that devil that met you yesterday when they meet you tomorrow they will not recognize you again they will know that a giant had arisen every day they met they met something and they felt he has been defeated they never knew that something was growing again until it grew and he became a catastrophe to them and their kingdom that's the process that's the process and so i learned never to neglect it when i read the account of jesus in the book of matthew in chapter 13 in chapter 23 and in verse 34 in matthew 23 verse 34 jesus christ said to his disciples he said that he said therefore behold i will send you prophets and wise men and scribes jesus was speaking he said i will send you prophets and wise men and scribes and some of them you shall kill and crucify and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogue and persecute them so for me i found out that god wanted to release the supernatural in, in in their world and jesus was saying that this was the reason why they never stepped into the fullness of their own day of visitation and when god was to bring the supernatural what did he do he started sending prophets wise men and scribes so i discovered that the supernatural is introduced by different vessels and different instruments so don't ever base your theology or your followership of god or your ideology of god's ministers that is just one person that have a particular spectacular characteristics of dimension therefore he becomes the one and so if he's not coming from that spectacular dimension god is not probably speaking i can tell you you will miss the supernatural because sometimes even through your child at home god will speak to you am i correct he has even spoken through animals and so the matter is complex turn to your neighbor tell him the matter is complex tell him have an open heart tell your neighbor say have an open heart and a humble spirit and be sensitive you will hear him you will hear him i don't know what i'm saying now is it is it is it blessing anybody's life is anybody having a better understanding so that we will not be driven driven we will become stable and balanced not be tossed by certain kinds of things when they appear the reason why god is sending us prophets wise men and i see their role as different i see them in different role yet bringing the supernatural in diff playing different role yet bringing the supernatural the bible said i mean the prophets declare the mind of god the wise men explain the mind of god the scribes write the mind of god am i correct but it doesn't make any of them any less the prophets declare the mind of God just as I'm declaring just as we are declaring this meeting was is full of declarations that's why we're excited God has proven to it that you have been visited the wise man explains the mind of God and so as you go please look for people who are wise with God don't join yourself to with the foolish company are you listening to me don't join yourself with cynics with those who doubt with those who speak who talk down on the things god is doing no you join yourself with people who are wise the wise are those who bring counsel they explain the mind of god then the scribe writes the mind of god it means you need to be reading you need to be reading in order to become fully operational in the supernatural you need to be reading oh am i talking to someone this morning things that are put down by scribes that's the privilege we have that we expose to spiritual things and so if if the mind of god cannot be discerned because it didn't come in a certain spectacular way or it didn't come in a certain specification that you have created you may likely miss great dimensions of the supernatural work of god so i am praying for you lift up your hands wherever you are i prophesy over your life that today every dimension that god intends to visit you with you will have an understanding in the name of jesus receive understanding in the name of jesus at that point i came down to my knees and i began to say lord help me give me help my understanding enlarge my understanding now i know that you can visit me by every means through many means I began to study the life of Elijah because for years I have discovered 
that the intention of God is for me to walk in the supernatural. And for years, I've had experiences that proves that the supernatural is indeed a reality for believers. And I've, 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 I've been privileged to benefit immensely from the blessings that the supernatural lifestyle can offer. I've been privileged. I'm a product of supernatural mercy. I was a sick child when I was born and growing. I, I caught the vision of becoming a medical doctor because I spent many days of my early childhood in the hospital, constantly sick, always sick. I had asthma as a little boy. I had problems with the eyes, partially blinded. And they said that at the age of nine or 10, I would go totally blind and I wouldn't see again. At some point, my brother was the one leading me when we go to church. So I knew that my world was collapsing. Many times my mother will have to carry me and run to the hospital when I have sudden crisis and my kind of attack was, was terrible. When, 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 the hemoglobin, when, when the hemoglobulins just fill my body like that, I can't breathe anymore. It looks like I'm dying. Then I will go out, I pass out and they, they think I'm, I'm dead. I'm the first son, her first son, promised son. She waited for years. My father waited for years. And they made all kinds of promises over my head. And even sold me to God before I was born. I told them that, you see, people should have waited for me to come. Let's discuss this thing. They, they sold me, bought, sold the money, paid the money to God, put my life there. And just to be able to have me. Be careful the promises you made to God just because you want to receive something. And when you receive it, you forget. Be careful the promises you make. They made too many promises over my head. And when it became a reality that promises and covenant is speaking, I said to God, please help me. There is, we need to discuss this business. Permit me to do something. Permit me to be a doctor and be working while I serve you. Because from the way the promises are being said, it looks like I should be living, I will be living inside the church and not go anywhere. I should be living. I said, God, no, no, please, God. I was not there when they were doing this promise. Please, permit me, let me contribute a little. They agreed together and sold me even before I came. Some of you, that was the kind of things you made over your child and your children. I prophesy over your life. They will never wander away from those covenants. I speak upon their life. They shall never wander away from those covenants in the name of Jesus Christ. I began to realize that the supernatural makes things possible. So, with my experience and encounter constantly at the hospital, it became an interest in my heart to become a doctor because that's the people I saw always. So when you ask me, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a medical doctor. And of course, the Lord had mercy on me and agreed because since I've suffered a lot as a child, he allowed me to experience it. And today he has made me what he wants me to be. But I know that the better part of my life is not because I am a doctor. The better part of my life is because I'm his servant. I'm a child of God. I prophesy over your life. That nothing greater, nothing better shall take the place of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are, sing it with me. The love of my life. Sing it together. And you are the hope, the hope that I cling to. You mean, you mean, you mean more, more than this world to me. Sing it. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Oh, I wouldn't trade you, wouldn't trade, yes, for riches untold. You are, you are, you are my everything. And so I realized. As I learned from the scripture that in the in the days in the seasons of the supernatural please listen to me in the seasons of the supernatural take note that humans the 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 human nature still shows up even as the supernatural is in operation you are uh, you may be high but still human turn to your friend tell him you may be high but still human and tell him be conscious of that tell him tell him say, be conscious of that I have read about great men of the scripture who were deeply in the supernatural manifestations of God I remember Elijah saying something he was so sincere enough 
to tell one woman and say this one that is happening now god did not reveal it to me did you remember that he said it and i, I said yes so he's still human this one going on now i didn't hear it this one going on now i didn't know i'm ignorant that's what that's what elijah was trying to say i began to pray and say god make me sincere in this whole experience so that i will know when the humanness is in place and when the divine is in place with that i will not mix up your program and confuse your agenda because the supernatural is a season when we must be we must work in accuracy somebody shout accuracy i can't hear someone say accuracy it's a season of accuracy and for accuracy to be to, to for the for accuracy to be fine-tuned for you to fine tune to accuracy you must have certain things you be aware of certain things and put those factors in cognizance and say these are the realities so that when you know this is coming from me i say this is coming from me paul said i speak to you as as paul the human being this is not me speaking as an apostle i speak from myself so that it can be clear to you and yet this is a man that has fellowship with god in the third realms in the third heavens he sat with him and great and unspeakable things were shown to him which were which were not to be uttered i know a man whether he is in the body or out of the body i do not know but this man was taken up in the spirit and taken to the third heavens i said eh apostle and was shown things which were unspeakable so he saw things that only spirits can see and he saw things that only spirits talk and discuss so he came down and when he came back he knew that this one this particular information is only when spirit discuss that we say it he was disciplined enough to keep his mouth shut he didn't come back and say ah i just came back from the third heaven this morning it's not everything in the supernatural you tell people <laughs> look at your friend tell him in the supernatural i, I can't hear you look tell your friend say in the supernatural you don't owe men all the explanation do you agree with what i'm saying are you listening are you agreeing with what i'm saying you agree with what i'm saying say yes i agree you don't owe men all the explanation john was asked to seal up the words of prophecy which he has been revealed seal it up it's for an appointed time don't talk about it don't even write it seal it up daniel the same thing these things you have seen seal it up don't speak so it is not everything that happens that you must explain sometimes your life begins to go in a dimension that people don't understand i don't owe you explanation god is working out his purpose and and by and by you will understand you will understand i speak into your spirit this morning as you hear these things may an activation begin to occur in your spirit as you hear these things may an activation begin to occur in your life God is working his purpose out. Sing it with me. As he succeeds the year. God is working his purpose out. As the time is drawing near. Nearer and nearer draws the time the time that shall surely be when the earth shall be filled with the glory of god as the world covers the sea by and by we will understand it so it's a process keep that in mind so i began to realize that there are three spirits three spirits struggling to operate the supernatural or three spirits struggling to hijack our attention when it comes to the supernatural knowing that you and i is the focus man is the focus of the supernatural whenever god is opening a supernatural realm man is his focus and so knowing that you are the focus there are three other spirits that is contesting with god two other spirits contesting with god for you as a focus and the first is the evil spirit in fact while i was studying scripture and i was meditating concerning the supernatural i began to understand that the declarative the declarative and the instructive 
and the documentative are all forms of supernatural dimensions. The declarative comes from the prophet. The instructive comes from the wise men and the teachers. The documentative comes from the scribes and the writers. All are forms of the supernatural, you know, you know, outpouring channels from which it could flow. There are more channels, but at least this is from scripture. Then it began to become strengthening in my spirit that the declarative, if we are to borrow, if we are to hold upon it and begin to use it to, to, to magnify like a glass, like a magnifying glass, to look into the supernatural and have more deeper understanding, deeper understanding as to the sensitive realities that we must be conscious of. So that after the great encounters, as we leave, what is going to guide you after this are the sensitive realities you have come to know by way of knowledge so that when you see and know, your mind can be activated to apply in such direction and be guided. So I found out that in scripture, the declarative, so when I looked at the, prophet, the prophetic, the prophetic as a supernatural way of expressing the, super, the, 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 the supernatural, I found out that there are three ways it can come. Or three spirits that contest for it. Number one is the, is the evil spirit. Evil spirit. What I'm trying to say is that the evil spirit can bring a supernatural dimension. Yet it is not from God. Is it possible? <laughs> Am I talking to someone? Is it possible? So we must be sensitive about that. Sensitive about that. In Jeremiah, in chapter 23, and in verse 13, if, you, if someone had a living Bible, I would have loved us to read. If you have a living, the living Bible, read from the living Bible. I, but I'll read from, uh, I would, uh, in, in, in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 23 and in verse 13. The Bible says something. It said, and I have seen the folly of the prophets of Samaria. I have seen the foolishness of the prophets of Samaria. For the Bible said, they prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Does anybody have the living Bible here? Read it. I prefer it in the living Bible. I have seen... I have seen the foolishness of the people of Israel. Anybody with the living Bible? Yes, read. Yes. Yes, read out. Can you give me my, a microphone? I knew that the prophets of... Come close, come close, quickly. Quickly, quickly. I knew the prophet of Samaria were unbelievable evil. I knew that the prophet of Samaria were unbelievably evil. They were determined to be evil, yes? For they prophesied by Baal. They and, prophesied by Baal. And lead my people Israel into sin. And led my people Israel to deceit. So, it is clear that they prophesied by evil spirits. So, the question is, everyone listen to me now. The question is, are they prophesying? I, can, I need to hear. Are they prophesying? Is prophesying a dimension of the supernatural? But is it the spirit of God that was behind the prophesying? So, there could be a supernatural dimension coming from a wrong spirit. In the book of First Chronicles in chapter 10 and in verse 13, the Bible said, so Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that was a medium, and to seek, asking counsel from one that was a medium, and to seek his counsel. If you, if you look at a translation, he said, he went to ask counsel from familiar spirits. How many of you have heard of the word familiar spirits? Yes, that. put it on the screen. Familiar spirits. That was where the council came. And so, prophecy, yes. But what was the product? It led the people astray. It led the people astray. Saul went and consulted with familiar spirits. And that familiar spirit became his iniquity. And God was heartbroken. If you look at 1 Samuel in chapter 28 from verse 6, the Bible said that Samuel called upon, Saul called upon, I'm talking about Saul, not Samuel, please. It was Saul that consulted with familiar spirit and God was annoyed. In 1 Samuel in chapter 28 and in verse 6, the Bible said that Saul called upon the Lord and the Lord answered him not, whether by the Urim or by the Tumim or by the priest. 
Saul inquired of the Lord and God answered him not. God refused to talk even when he was around. So I began to wonder, why will, why will God not speak even when he is around? So I discovered that the problem was that he does not want to talk to Saul. And I said to myself, ah, what about others who were there that was hoping to hear God speak? So because of Saul, they have missed God's visitation. Then it occurred to me that there are people in your life that cause network failure. In this season of supernatural, every network failure, may the Lord eject them from our churches. Turn to your friend, tell him we have many guys in church who cause network failure. Tell him, tell him. People who don't believe that God is in the move, they castigate everything, they condemn everything. The power of God is manifesting. They say, this is not like we know. This is not, this is not traditional. This is not, this is not it. Who are you to tell God pattern? Who are you to define for God ways and systems? When you begin to behave like that, I begin to suspect you that your mast has collapsed. And if your mast has collapsed, you will cause me network failure. I need to take off. Disengage from every network failure. The people that come, it was, the Bible said, as long as, do you know what, the Bible, what that means? That God did not speak, whether by the priests or by the Urims and the Tumims. So, the Urims and the Tumims were failing, not because the Urims and Tumims are failure, because somebody was there. The priest was having blackout. He wants to hear God on Sunday morning. The, the hearing God is not working because the members have become so connected to some ugly things and bitterness has filled the church and the atmosphere is so polluted even the priest is no longer able to hear God the Bible says in the book of Leviticus that the priest who has an injury who has a wound or healed wound cannot come up to the holy place have you read that in scripture go and read Leviticus go and read chapter 18 go and read chapter 23 you will see all that was the Lord said to Moses tell the children of Aaron that anyone that will come to this holy place will have nothing to do with dead bodies he began to list all kinds of things that that such person will not have anything to do with. He said he would not touch the things that are dead. He would not relate with unclean women. He will not, he will not have an unusual markings on his body, tattoos, tattoos, markings. He will not have an abnormal hairdo. All these things we call pastors today that will do something and you don't know whether he's a pastor or a rascal. They should stop deceiving us. Am I talking to someone? Go and read the scripture, it's there. They will not have writings on their body, tattoos. He's talking about the sons of the Kohatite, the one that will come to the holy place. The, the Lord began to tell Moses conditions and things. They will not. In fact, scripture said that if he is crippled, if he has a problem on the leg, he should not come. If he had a problem in the hand, the hand was broken, he's not qualified to serve. He said, if he's hunched back, he will not come. If he is a dwarf, cockatry, he will not come. If his nose is flat, he should not come. God, you don't <laughs> you can't read that in scripture it's there at least i have read the bible it's there he shouldn't come i was looking at all of that and i said god what's the meaning of all of this he said these are spiritual conditions go and study them and i'll tell you the reasons and he began to tell me what they mean in my time he said he will not have anything to do with the dead it means anywhere i am there should be life it must be lively if i am in a congregation that congregation must be lively what does it mean to be a lively place joy must be found sorrow must be taken so i can't exist among the people who are unforgiving and who want to live in bitterness no if i am there and after some years you are not changing then i know a demon is in you i will begin to pray for your deliverance because i cannot be where men are dead if the supernatural is upon me i speak over your life Wherever you enter, anything dead will come alive. Anything dead, come alive in the name of Jesus. If it's not coming alive, confront it. Can you hear me? Confront it. Because there is a quickening spirit that, that works in our lives. And that quickening spirit will quicken us.
Oh. So when I began to look at those things, the Lord began to open my ears and understanding to know what it means. He said he will not, he will not take your wife among defiled women. So I knew that defilement is critical. I must ensure that a life of purity is upon me. That's, that's, that's the family. To carry the supernatural. He said he will not have an abnormal markings on his body. So I should be careful how I look. Excesses are not, are not allowed. Can you hear me, church? Because we are of the supernatural generation. We cannot borrow everything that the world presents. No, 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 no. Everything they present, we want to borrow. No, no, no. There is limits to it. There is moderation to it. Somebody say moderation. There is moderation to it. There's moderation to it. I can't go your extreme. Because your extreme is not Zion. Your extreme is Babylon. I speak over your life. May nothing carry you to Babylon in this season. In Babylon, you will still see the dimensions. You will still see the manifestations. But it's Babylon. What God is doing now is that he's collapsing Babylon in the mind and in the hearts of those who have understanding. So that they can come to the extremes of Zion. In Zion, we are modest. In Zion, we are, we are self-controlled. In Zion, we are spirit-controlled. Not even self-controlled, it's spirit-controlled. Spirit-controlled. If his leg is broken, he shouldn't come close. So I should have a walk with God that is healthy. If his hands are broken, he shouldn't have come close. So the things I do for the Lord should glorify him. If he is a dwarf, he shouldn't come close. So I ought to be growing in the spirit. If what I am 10 years ago should not be the message I'm preaching 10 years after. Then the supernatural is not at work in your life. I can't remain a dwarf repeating one old story and say I'm a priest. How can the people be alive? What you release is life. The word I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and what? Life. So you can't be saying the same thing over and over again. They are new every morning. Sing it. New every morning. Even God renews himself. Great is thy faithfulness. He told them in the wilderness. Oh, don't keep this man at you tomorrow. It will decay. Great is there is fresh bread for tomorrow. Wait for it, receive it, and become new. We say they are new. Sing it out. Every morning, always new. I just want to do some teachings that will help us. Great is thy faith, faithfulness. Oh Lord, oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Scripture made it clear. If he has hunchback, he will not, if he has a scab on his body, unhealed wound, he should not come up to the altar. I said, God, what is that? What does that mean? He said, unhealed wound. That's what it means. I said, so what is unhealed wound? He said, if you are one who will carry my glory, don't come up to the altar with bitterness. Wounded heart is unhealed. Because if you come up to the altar, you will start attacking people because of the sickness, the, the wound in your heart. Your salmon will be wound. Am I talking to someone this morning? Your salmon will be the injury in you is what you are releasing. The Lord said, I don't want you to release your injury to them. So, if they injure you, come to me, I will heal you and give you peace. If they accuse you, come to me, I will hug you and pat you on the back and give you small reward that will that will compensate you then when you come up express joy express my spirit it, and they will know that's how the devil will know that he is irrelevant i speak over your life from today satan shall become irrelevant in your life he said don't come up with injuries don't come up don't come to the altar with on with, with wound unhealed wound on your body go and read it it's there in leviticus so I began to realize what God was saying. Oh, is that the demand? Yes. That's the demand. That's the demand. He consulted with familiar spirits. So I discovered that the spirit can be wrong. So the supernatural is judged. The supernatural is judged not just by the spectacular performances 
but by the spirit producing it. The supernatural is judged, not just by the spectacular performances, but by the spirit producing it. Not just by the product, but by the process. Yes, the power behind it. In the book of 1 Kings, I remember in chapter 22 and in verse 22. 1 Kings 22, 22, put it on the screen. The Bible said that, that the, the evil spirit said that we will go and become lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. I looked at that. 1 Kings 22, 22. I think I love this, the, 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 the verses to be displayed on the screen, if it's possible for, with the media team. He said that the, the lying spirit agreed that it will go and become a lying spirit in the mouth of the king's prophets. These prophets we are talking about were the king's prophets. And by that, with a supernatural picture coming from a lying spirit, the genuine supernatural act of God was hijacked. It was just hijacked. And that is why I'm praying that we see similar and spectacular performances coming from strange spirits in our world today. Am I correct? Similar spectacular performances coming from strange spirits today. Today the church is, look at the media. Are we not challenged? That's why God is bringing in time like this genuine revival. In the Anglican communion is happening. In other denominations is going on. Don't think it's just here alone. In different places and pockets of the nation, God is awakening a new lineup, new breed. And very soon, this, these eruptions will come together and coalesce into one movement. And the whole system of the world will come shaking again. And it shall be fulfilled in scripture, as was prophesied by Haggai, that the Lord said, I will once and again shake the heavens and the earth. A revival is coming. If you believe it, rise up and shout, yes! It's coming. And I know it. It's coming. And so we see strange things happening here and there. Lying spirits everywhere. Lying wonders everywhere. And people have been deceived. But you are a generation that will never be deceived anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can't go on to begin to cite examples of the kinds of lying wonders we see. It's worse in the southeast. Oh my God. All forms of acro acrobatics. Businessmen on the pulpit that have no any encounter with God. Comedians becoming apostles and prophets. That he should be doing full comedy. I mean, it should have been full comedy. Just go into the go, go into the comedy world and come do have a successful comedy career. You came an open church. And you're there practicing comedy with all kinds of things we don't understand, and you call it the move of God. And all is a battle coming. Another spirit that battles the, the supernatural is the human spirit. First is the evil spirit. Second is the human spirit. The human spirit. In the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 23, and in verse 31. Look at Jeremiah 23. Quickly. I wish I could be fast about this. But I just want us to look at scriptures. Because sometimes I love going through scriptures. Jeremiah 23 verse 31 the Bible said behold I'm against the prophets saith the Lord yes behold I'm against the prophets saith the Lord that use what their thumb and says what so this one is not coming from the evil spirit it's coming from where their own human spirit it is by themselves that they are saying it. they use their tongue it's neither coming from the evil spirit it's not coming from the holy spirit it's coming from the human spirit they use their tongue if you look at verse 16 the bible said thus saith the lord of hosts the same jeremiah 23 in verse 16 he said thus saith the lord of hosts hearken unto the words hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you they make you vain they speak a vision of their own hearts. Did you see that in his Bible? I underlined it in the Bible. They speak a vision of their own hearts. And not out of who? Mouth of the Lord. They speak a vision of their own hearts. God was clear there. 
that it is not an evil spirit informing them it is what their own hearts and they even have a vision so i wondered so your own heart can give you a vision yes whatever you think you whatever you think about too long you can dream about it you think about it so long you may dream about it that's why you need it you need now to be you need to begin to to understand how god communicates with you you need to understand all the things you bring in picture to balance god's message you need to understand how to bring a, a number of things together to 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 x-ray and analyze whatever comes to you because something can come to me that looks as if god is speaking but it is from my human spirit that's what the bible said look at verse 25 the same the same jeremiah in verse 25 the bible said i have heard what the prophet said they prophesy lies in my name saying i have dreamed i have dreamed saying i have dreamed i have dreamed does that make dreams invalid no does that make dreams false no but does that make you more conscious whenever you dream yes if you have a dream before you share it think very well suddenly you had a dream and you saw you saw the <laughs> you saw your neighbor chasing you with a machete and a mask suddenly you cut him or her and remove the mask and saw it was your neighbor then you wake up and say the holy ghost has done great thing whereas you have been in enmity you have not lived right you have been in persistent grudge and bitterness with him for over the years your heart is at risk to conceive such a dream so when you see such please do not think about your neighbor think about an enemy when they came and said to jesus this 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 farmland had been destroyed and these people jesus said to them an enemy has done this rise in the place of prayer turn battle the enemy leave the man first just battle the enemy if you battle the enemy enough and hit him the man himself will be free if he is the person are you understand what i'm saying is the enemy i'm trying to tell you things that will make your life easier to live so that you can be lighter and less weight less weighty and you can soar in the realms there are times you may learn how to drop the burdens that man fellow men have put upon your heart on account of their misdeeds and misbehavior you have to learn it you learn how to lift it up and drop it off and focus on the next assignments otherwise they will retard your journey and make your supernatural experience heavy to encounter and difficult they use their tongue so i have defined three dimensions it comes either from evil spirit or from human spirit or from the holy spirit evil spirit human spirit holy spirit the three are battling the three are fighting constantly for the supernatural manifestation yes it comes from the holy spirit in first samuel chapter 10 and in verse 9 the bible said the spirit of the lord came upon saul and changed his heart gave him a change of heart first samuel chapter 9 chapter 10 i mean in verse 9 he changed him and gave him a different heart and from then he became a man full of the holy spirit he he spake from that yes and it was so that when he turned his back to go from Samuel, god gave him another heart and all the signs did what came to pass god gave him another heart it was god working on him gave him another heart now now i would have loved to to speak more about this the heart of the supernatural i wouldn't want to talk about it it's another issue when a man comes to a point when god has removed this no, this normal heart that makes you human and gives you another heart that is the heart of jesus the bible said let this mind be in you which also is in who in christ jesus arriving at that point your own done better and you understand what i'm saying now because the things that influence your people and your world will no longer influence you you have a different you have an altered heart in the book of second peter chapter one 
and in verse 21 the bible said prophecy did not come by the will of man prophecies does not come by the will of man first peter second peter chapter 1 verse 21 he said but when holy men holy men speak as they were moved by the holy ghost prophecies does not come in the old time by the will of man it means that the will of man is one of the channels is a possible channel are you understanding man the will of man is a possible channel which i've, I've described it came as men speak by the holy ghost and so if these three things if these three spirits are constantly battling with the supernatural how do you now know when the supernatural is, is at work how you will know is that scripture has said something in first john chapter 4 in first john chapter 4 verse 1 the lord said we should test every spirit right test every spirit first john chapter 4 the instruction is test belong believe not every spirit but try the spirit whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world many supernatural dimensions have gone out into the world so don't just key into everything you see test the spirit and my challenge is how do we test it how do we test it first test test number one fulfillment test i call it fulfillment te the fulfillment test i will explain the fulfillment test if you look at the book of deuteronomy in chapter 18 deuteronomy chapter 18 if you look at verse 21 in deuteronomy 18 verse 21 the bible said and if thou sayest in thy heart are you there deuteronomy 18 from verse 21 and if thou say in thine heart how shall we know the word which the lord had not spoken verse 20 22 he now said when a prophet speaketh in the name of the lord if the things follow not nor come to pass that's that is the thing which the lord has not spoken but the prophet had spoken it presumptuously thou shall not be afraid of him somebody say amen, amen. so it means that that people in this in the supernatural seasons people can bring an element of fear to manipulate people in believing in believing what is not true am i correct that there's a dimension that people can bring and you see them bringing a fear upon upon people you see if you don't do this by the unction over my life you will die the next day and you look at what he's asking you to do it's not the will of god it's not the mind of god it's just a desire it's just a it's just ah well pray more i pray for you may god give you an understanding heart and an understanding spirit he spoke presumptuously so the lord said how do we know that god has spoken one of the tests to know is what i call the fulfillment tests if he has spoken it will come to pass but then if we are to stop there we may be creating a vacuum for confusion and the confusion is this does it mean that because it happened therefore god has spoken i'm asking you does it mean because it was fulfilled then god has spoken no even satan speaks and it comes to fulfillment am i correct again i want to ask does it mean i mean if god speaks and it does not happen does it mean it is false prophet does it mean it's a wrong prophecy no so god can also speak and it will not come to pass i saw it in the bible i saw it in the bible and i was surprised he spoke tied his name to it identified his sovereignty and supremacy to the word he spoke and we were waiting for the word to happen it did not happen and it didn't make him any less it didn't make him any 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 way less as god this young man was sent to go and deliver a message to a people his name is jonah and the and jonah of a man is stubborn he didn't want to go he took a journey in the opposite direction the story is familiar we know about it right he took a journey in the opposite direction instead of entering a business class ship sitting in the business class that would take him successfully to where he was going he insisted to be thrown into the sea that guy is stubborn rather than go to this message let me die that's what he was trying to say rather than obey god i rather die throw me into the water i would drown and die 
And I'm asking Jonah, if you die, who are you going to meet? You come and stand before him. And what will you tell him? I don't want to do your work. Now you have come to his door. He will say, <laughs> And God, because he refused to go with the ship, God sent him into a submarine to take him. The submarine is called the fish airline. He sent him there. And the thing collected him and moved him by force. To the territory he never wanted to go. And so I said to myself that some things happen. Sometimes I saw God walking with Jonah. I'm learning everything in scripture. I saw God walking with Jonah's disobedience. And for me, I concluded that sometimes God uses the disobedience of a prophet to strengthen the message. To strengthen the message. What, what do I mean by that? The people of Nineveh were at the beach. Just picture it this way. That they were at the beach, you know, having recreation and, and just playing around. And suddenly one big fish just arrives. The submarine. And opens his mouth like this. And Jonah just came down. Speaking in tongues. And came out. It is clear that everybody will believe his message. They will see it as one strange thing. But that's not my interest. My interest was that Jonah became offended that a tree withered and that God had deceived him and that God had made him a liar and that God didn't prove him, him to be a genuine prophet. So Jonah, I mean, Jonah wanted God to kill all the people. Must God kill everybody just to make, just to make you right? I mean, you want, you want him to kill everybody so that they will say, Kai, he's a prophet. He mustn't kill people just to make you right. The essence of the prophecy was that there is a key for mercy. If the people repent, even the prophecy may not be fulfilled. So the moment the people repented, God withdrew his words. Every time God spoke about what he's going to do, he tied it to a condition. Are you, are you listening to me now? So when, when God's word didn't go the way he speaks, check the condition. What happened is the condition. What happened is the condition. Someone say it is the condition. Don't always think that God does not fulfill his word. He fulfills every word. The only challenge is that everything God says, everything he brings, he ties it to a condition. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. So if the land is so fruitful and you are not eating it, or the land is fruitless and barren. It is not God who caused the land. Check whether you are willing and what? Obedient. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is the Lord that walketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So God is walking in us to bring forth great dimensions and move. But then he said you should do also what? Walk out that salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling means be careful with everything. Be careful about it with fear and trembling. So if the move and the work of God is not real in your life, check if you are actually working out this salvation with fear and what? And trembling. For if it is for God, he is always at work within you to will and to do. He's always there. I have realized that the fulfillment test is a very valid test. But if you look at it and you don't understand it, and think that because it, it, it did not come to fulfillment, then God is not there, you may be making a mistake. I'm talking about things to understand in order that we may walk deeply in the supernatural. In Matthew chapter 17 and in verse 10, the Bible said, And the disciples asked him, saying, Why, why, why then say the scribe that Elias must first come? Why then did the scribe say that Elias must first come? In verse 11, he said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and shall restore all things. But in verse 12, he said, But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, so also shall the Son of Man suffer of them. I looked at this and I found out that one of the reasons why men think that the word of God has not been fulfilled is because of wrong interpretation wrong interpretation wrong understanding the disciples were still was still was still asking about the coming of john the baptist or the coming of elias the elias there is john the baptist 
they were still as John the Baptist was with them running ministry for years and they were still asking has he come so in other words there were there were some pictures they had in mind to define the arrival of Elia. are you understand what I'm saying now those are the pictures that that we need to start praying that the Holy Ghost will begin to deal with pictures coming from the cocoon of tradition pictures coming from the cocoon of customs pictures coming from the cocoon of ideologies and mindsets because the supernatural gives you a new heart it gives you a new spirit it gives you a new understanding you ask the Lord to deal with these things they had a wrong interpretation and Jesus said to them that what you are asking for had already happened so it is possible that someone is here saying God you have not fulfilled your word in my life in my family but as you didn't see well you are not looking well he had done it he has perfected it you only needed to have an eyes open to see i am praying for you lift up your hands wherever you are may your eyes be open to see what god has done Amen. i can't hear you i say may your eyes be open to see what the lord has done Amen. may your eyes be open to see what the lord has done Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. the second test is the followership test how to comprehend the supernatural and not make mistakes in the season can i tell you that we are in the season of the supernatural yes is that what we're enjoying yes how not to make the mistake i call that one the followership test if you look at the book of deuteronomy in chapter 13 you will discover what i'm trying to say the followership test is a very important way of discerning the supernatural in deuteronomy 13 the lord was was making them to understand that even if they see the manifestation please let's read from verse one and if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams or give it signs or a wonder this whole this whole manifestation you see in verse one can be considered as a supernatural right yes verse two scripture said and the sign or the wonder came to pass so this is not about that it didn't come to pass it actually came to pass so fulfillment test 100 percent. but you don't stop there the lord went on he said whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods let us go after other gods which thou had not known and let us serve him verse 3 thou shalt not hearken unto the word of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the lord your god proveth you to know whether you love the lord your god with all your hearts and with all your soul now hear the story that a prophet is come a certain manifestation of the supernatural is seen and in the midst of that whole manifestation and that whole season the person is leading you astray from the lord trying to lead you astray from christ from jesus perhaps maybe to man man worship ego worship personality worship or even obvious idol worship are you following what i'm trying to say i call it the followership test the prophecy came the manifestations happened we saw that god is here everything that showed it happened but in the end as i continue to interact with you you are leading us into another way. He said, how can not unto such voice? Stop following it. Am I making sense this morning? The first is the fulfillment test. The second is the followership test. And then the last, the third test is the fruit test. I call it the fruit test the fruit test that one is ethical and moral testing the fruit test the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 15 i mean chapter 7 verse 20 say by their fruits what happened by their fruits what happened we don't need we don't we don't need, we don't need to to run too far the fruit test if you if you look at that matthew chapter 7 from verse 15 scripture began to say that a good tree cannot bring forth what bad fruits neither can a bad tree bring forth what good fruits from verse 15 beware of false prophets that's that's why he started making that analogy 
So it was important for us that this is a testing point. It is a testing passage for the supernatural. A test passage. Litmus. I call these things litmus passages. Do you know what's litmus? It's like a litmus paper. It's litmus passages in scripture for, for guiding my way in the supernatural. Litmus passages and litmus verses. Litmus chapters. There are many litmus chapters in the Bible that when you bring together and put in your pocket, the pocket of your spirit and pocket of your mind, you can go the supernatural journey successfully and operate in it successfully and become a dominion. I mean, come to place of dominion and take over territories and kingdoms and no power will have audacity before you in the presence of God. These litmus passages are important. And so the moment I saw this, I said, okay, this is a litmus passage. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are what? Revealing wolves. Verse 16. Ye shall know them by what? By their fruits. Do men gather grapes from what? From thorns? Or they gather figs from where? From thistles. It can't happen. Go ahead. Even so, every good tree bring out forth what? Good fruit. But a corrupt tree will do what? Will bring forth corrupt. It's a, it's a matter of time. If your heart is not right in this clergy work, with time it will show. No matter how you pretend. <laughs> Am I talking to someone? And so sometimes, all you need to do as, as a man of the spirit is to begin to pray for a visit, for a transformation of heart. Give me a new heart. Create in me a clean heart. Sing it with me. Oh Lord, and renew the right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Oh Lord, and renew and renew the right spirit within me cast me not away cast me not away from thy presence oh lord oh take not your holy spirit from me restore unto me restore unto me the joy my salvation oh yes that's the test if God can guide you through this journey I'm rounding up now the Bible said it in James chapter 3 and in verse 14 that the wisdom that comes from above is pure is joyful it brings a, you know, when you read James chapter 3 from verse 14, you notice that bitterness has also invaded the church. And so, you need to watch it. You see, it, but if you have bitter envy and strive in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. If you have bitter envy and strive in your heart, this is, this is particularly for we ministers. Like God is telling me, if this thing is in my heart, I should not come and start preaching and tell him. I, I, somehow, I will not be able to preach the whole truth. Are you understanding me now? I, I, if this thing is in my heart, somehow, if I'm preaching the truth, I will not have the capacity to bring forth the whole truth. I'm talking about the fruit tests. Out of the the, the heart, the fruit comes. And so the Bible said, the next verse, the next verse, quickly. He said, this wisdom descended not from where? From a, this kind of wisdom that is full of bitterness and envy and all, it didn't come from above. But it is earthly, sensual, and even what? Devilish. Ah. For where envy and striving is, there is what and what again it's over the matter is over then <laughs> somebody say somebody say it's over yeah, come on. it's it's where it is i mean what the bible is saying here is that the bible is making an emphatic statement if this thing is around if this thing is is operating no matter how i try to manage it and try to control it the only solution is i should start working to end it 
I should start striving to terminate it. As long as we are, I'm trying to manage it along with the whole thing, it will bring what? Confusion. And it will produce what? Evil works. Can we come among us as team of clergy and ask ourselves, are we still in bitter envy and strives? If we are, then our clergy ministry will be producing evil works for the diocese. Take note of that. With all due respect and honor, I say it in my heart, are we in the team and house of bishops having strives and something like this among us as fathers? No matter how we manage it, the Bible has said it, there will be confusion. It will produce evil works. So, the supernatural man with a supernatural mindset is committed to an assignment. The assignment is that this heart of mine, this heart of mine, has the dear pants for water, so my soul longs for you forever and ever. Yes, this heart seeks for you. I'm not ready for your quarrel. I'm not ready for your backbiting. I'm not ready for your misunderstanding. As the dear pants for water, so my soul long for you. You people can be wasting time with discussions and case and settling case and raising issues against me. As the dear pants for water, so my journey is clear. My soul longs for you. Somebody rise upon your feet forever and ever. Yes, this heart beats for you as the dear pants for water so my soul longs for it is my prayer for for myself i don't know if it is a prayer for you this heart beats sing it again as the dear as the dear pants for water so my soul forever and ever yes. forever and ever yes this heart beats for this me. heart beats for as the you. dear pants for water as so. the dear pants for water so. my heart longs for you my soul longs for you forever and ever yes forever and ever yes this heart beats for you this heart beats for you that is to say that you will become a strange man in their midst. You will become a strange man among them. Kai, I am praying for some persons here. In all of those companies of confusion, you will become a strange man in their midst. Not having their kind of heart, not having their kind of thinking faculties, not having their kind of mentality. You are just a strange, different person yet in their midst because we can be in this world but we are not of this world yes we can be in the territorial environment but we operate in the celestial cities i don't belong here tell your neighbor i don't belong here i can't hear you tell him say don't think i belong here you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do think the way you want to think my heart has one mission as that there pants for waters my soul longs for you you alone have my strength my strength and shield oh. for you alone have my spirit's need you alone that my heart desires and alone and alone to Everybody sing it together. You alone, you alone, have my strength. Do you, you alone, that my spirit is. You, you alone, have my heart, my heart is Spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost forever. You has the Lord spoken to you this morning? Respond in the Holy Ghost. The supernatural man is a strange man 
in his environment he's carrying a different mentality a different mindset a different heart a different kind of operation he can be existing among unclean people he can be staying among unclean people but he has nothing in common with them in mentality nothing in common with them in agenda nothing in common in agenda he is a supernatural man if you want to know him meet him in zion and you will understand what happens in his heart if you want to know him meet him in zion and you will realize where his heart is somebody pray in the holy ghost this morning as the departed for the water so my soul longed after you oh, and you you alone are my heart my heart desires and alone and alone to work yes you the devil plants human beings and use them to pollute your journey in the super, into the supernatural I prophesy over your life may God disengage you from them and order your steps the reason why I'm very I'm very particular about this is because the, 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 the supernatural is both a vertical and a horizontal interaction is both a vertical and a horizontal operation. Look at a man like, like Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus. Jesus hit him from the horse. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? The man looked at him and said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. You cannot kick too long against the, bro the, the, the goats. He, he slapped him from the horse and, and threw him down like a lightning. And when the encounter became too heavy, Apostle, the, the young man looked, Saul said, what then shall I do, Lord? He said, this particular answer is not going to come vertically. I've put the answer in a man's hand, horizontally. Go there, they will tell you what to do. I was wondering, why didn't Jesus tell him everything to do there? In the supernatural, everything doesn't come vertical. Some will come horizontal. So be careful of the kind of people you meet. And when you see people whom God has put this kind of heart in them, don't fight them. If you fight them, you are stupid. I'm saying it. I'm saying with every humility. I have a burden for the church. I have a burden for the body of Christ. We have lost our strength because so many things we have failed to understand. That's why I honor this altar. When I see people from different denominations, different backgrounds coming together to worship God. I say something is happening here something is happening here. yet we are not we have not we are not losing our uniqueness we are not losing our individuality we are not losing our differences but we just understand that this one is what is common for us is common for us wherever we are we are all seeking for Yahweh he who is king of the supernatural is a common goal when the church begins to understand what is common for them then a powerful church is about to arise I read in the book of Revelation, in book of Revelation in chapter 16 and verse 13. In Revelation chapter 16, 10, the Bible said that there were three evil spirits, like frogs, proceeding out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beasts, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. Revelation. Three evil spirits, like frogs, proceeding out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beasts, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. I looked at it and I said, ah, what is this? The Holy Ghost began to teach me. And said, This is the Trinity of iniquity. 
because the devil knows how to copy God. So God has a trinity. When Satan fell, he went and organized his own trinity. But it's not the trinity of divinity, it's the trinity of iniquity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He came and organized his own. Dragon, beast, and false prophets. So, 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 God the Father, the dragon is, 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 is confronting him. Have you not seen everything about the dragon, Satan himself? He wants to take the, the place of God in our lives. He, he wants your worship. He wants your worship. From the very beginning, he, he envied and, and admired the throne of God. Am I correct? Till today, he has not changed. That's why he's called Satan the dragon. He is fighting God the Father himself. Then, God the Son, the beast. What do you call him? Antichrist. So he is Antichrist. That one is God the Son. So he prepared the beast to tackle God the Son. So if anything happening in your life is not proceeding from Christ, it's proceeding from the beast. If anything happening in the church is not fully coming from Christ, let's watch it. It may be the beast producing it. Because the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the beast will speak mighty things about God. He will speak mighty religious things and even come among the people and the people will wonder at the beast and worship it so the beast can even be a religious figure. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I can preach here till evening. Scripture is, rest, is, is necessary for our move this season. Then the one that destroyed my heart most was that the dragon is fighting God the Father. Trying to take the place of God the Father. The beast is trying to take the place of who? God the Son. Now, what of the Holy Spirit? Who is trying to take his place? I shocked. Someone say, I shock. I can't hear. Someone shout, I shock. Do you know that false prophets have made believers in church not to even have relationship anymore with the Holy Spirit? Every little thing. Sit down with the Holy Spirit to talk to you. You want to go to prophets. What is God, what is God saying? Is he the Holy Spirit? Then I looked at it. I realized. I said, this thing is true. That this thing is true. False prophets. They have made us lose our mind. So that we no longer interact with the Holy Spirit. Yet, in the day of the supernatural, the main controller of it is the Holy Spirit. Anything outside the Holy Spirit is either the evil spirit or the human spirit. Now, the evil spirit is coming as a false prophet. He's coming as a false prophet and human spirit. Two against one. So if you are not calculative in this battle, you will choose among the three and choose wrongly. But you will not make a mistake. Your generation will not fail in the name of Jesus. I have prayed. I have prayed like a madman. Every day, I believe in prayers. Ah, prayer is hobby. I filled it in my university as my hobby. I filled it. Hobby, prayer. I prayed prayer until, until the university authority summoned me. I wanted to talk to me. Let me, let me leave that story. I had issues on campus with authority because of the blasting of prayer. Every night, you must hear the most hear voice. It came to a point, the spirit of prayer invaded the campus. Because what we do is that we beat boss guitar at night. I play the boss guitar. I play the guitar very well. So we, we, we beat boss guitar. You know, I felt if I had, if I had a keyboard I could carry on the neck, and it would be like, and I'll be playing it and walking about. That would have, that would have been what I would love to have. But it wasn't possible. So it was boss guitar. It was boss guitar. Sometimes at midnight in medical school, I finish studying, I come out, I pick my boss guitar, I walk the length and breadth of the University of Nigeria Nugu campus singing. My eighty, my eighty goes, and you are crowned, Lord of all, and you are crowned. King of Africa, and who can deny you are, you are the Lord of Lords. Silence. It's all, we're singing it all night on campus, walking. By picking the bus. People are in their room, students are in their room sleeping, hearing the voice of a man crying all along the streets of campus. It wasn't long. It wasn't long. You'll be crying on the streets of campus. you hear somebody in their room screaming under the power of the Holy Ghost. In the midnight. In the midnight, screaming. Ah, 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 what is going on? 
the power of God is there touching. And so that happened. He woke up. There are nights, every corner, somebody will bring out his head from the window, blasting in tongues. The spirit of the Lord came upon the institution. They summoned me and said, What's wrong with you? What are you doing here? I know when a revival comes, it's invasional. It's an invasion. I am praying for you. Anything that is taking the place of the Holy Spirit in the church, we cast them out in the name of Jesus. For over 15, for over, over 18 years, I've been in what looks like a hiding. Like a hiding. Like, like something like a hiding. The Holy Ghost will tell you, remain. Don't go out. My friends have asked me, why not be everywhere on the media? Why not have all the link? Up? I told them, no, I, there, is, there is a kind of instruction I think I have now. He said, there's a time for it. Now I'm waiting. And he said, wait, wait. You have to wait. You can't be active about what he has not said. It may cause you to become vulnerable. Whatever he does is his will. But my worry here is that false prophets were designed to knock the Holy Ghost out of the church. They've created confusions in families. They've caused confusions in churches. They've, they've, they've taken things out of people's place. It has even made men know to sit again to allow the Holy Spirit to develop them. And then, they, because of this whole thing, it has produced a lazy church that does not want to yearn for God. And so, he believes that if anything happens, my pastor, my prophet is around. My man of God is around. I will go there and see him. So, we become like the people of Samaria who develop high places everywhere to make worship easy. Before it was to Jerusalem, you have to travel. You have to go on camels for days. And, 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 and so for you to go to Jerusalem, it means you really want to serve God. Because the journey alone and the pain going through deserts is enough to disqualify the insincere worshippers. Are you on something now? So, so what they did was that, was that you, know, you know, the scene of, 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 of Samaria was that it went and developed high places to make worship easier. And so the people came to high places and made inquiries. But they didn't know it was idolatry. And God said to him, what is the sin of Jerusalem? Is it not Samaria? He was telling the prophet, what is the sin of Jerusalem? Is it not Samaria? What God was saying was, where did Jerusalem copy this nonsense they are doing? Is it not from Samaria? That now they leave the temple and go and start producing high places to make worship easier for the people. And today... Is our environment not filled with high places at every corner of the junction? There is one high place, it's taught everywhere. High places, high places, high places. Yet the people are easily assessing the high place, but that they are not assessing God. Am I talking to somebody this morning? These are the challenges of the supernatural. We're talking about the supernatural in this conference. I'm in the teaching mode this morning. Kim, you have to time me. Tell me when I'll dismiss. He says nine o'clock, right? Time has finished, Stephen. Bear with me. Bear with me. We are going to pray with this verse. I saw the power of spiritual authority here. I saw power here. I saw three unclean spirits. Like frogs. Coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Out of the mouth of the beast. Out of the mouth of the false prophet. So, the dragon... What I saw here is the is is unity, unity of power. Someone say unity. The Lord said to me, Go here and study the secret of spiritual power. I was praying, Lord, why is the church weak? Why is the church weak? Why is the church not so powerful? And when I talk about the church, I'm not talking about denominational church, I'm talking about the body of Christ in a land. Are you understanding me, sir? Now the body of Christ together in a land. So not denomination, it's the body of Christ. What represents the kingdom of God in this land? Why are we not strong? He said, Go to Revelation 16 13. Let me show you why. As I read it, I said, How can this be the, the secret? What have we got to do with unclean spirits? Demons, dragon. He said, No, 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 no. Look very well. So I started looking. He said that you will see the, the, the secret of spiritual power here is unity. Somebody say unity. I can't somebody say unity. What I saw here was that they were releasing the same spirits. The dragon was releasing frog. How many? Three. The beast was also releasing frog. How many? Three. The false prophet was also releasing what? Frogs. How many? Three. So everyone was releasing the same spirit. I want to ask us in the church, are we releasing the same spirit? Denominationally, are we releasing the same spirit? 
The Lord said to me, any day my people start releasing the same spirit, the land will be conquered. That's what I saw here. Any day my people start releasing the same spirit, it's over. He said, look me as God. The whole land will be conquered. With no spirit. Sorry, I don't mean this. I don't mean this with any denominational sentiments. God is my witness. I'm not here to attack. I'm here to call, to, to raise a voice for the end time church. We're in the end time. We're in the last days. Am I correct? And we must come to the unity of spirits. The Bible didn't say unity of denomination. It said unity of spirits. That is why I'm excited with Peniel. It's a place for the unity of spirits. People come everywhere. It's unity of spirit here. Yeah. Because when we dismiss, all of us go back to our own various homes, various places, various altars. But when we come here, we come to pull something down together. Sir, I am praying. For all of you ministers here, you don't know what you are doing. This pineal has already gone beyond Taraba. It has gone beyond Jalingo. It has gone beyond the north. It's, it's a, it shall soon become a northern sub-regional gathering. I am prophesying, I know. It shall soon become a northern sub-regional gathering. And because the supernatural works with the horizontal and the vertical God brings the horizontal and you don't want to understand the vertical you may not be a, a good candidate my Bible said to me that they had unity of spirit if I am Anglican we, we, want to, we want to gather a weapon we want to form one weapon to destroy the enemy I bring my own spirit they bring a big, a big bowl a big drone, a big tank I bring my own spirit and point to it Roman Catholic, bring on our own. Come and pour. Pentecostal, bring on our own. Come and pour. Our brothers, cherubim and cherubim, bring on our own. Come and pour. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Bring your own. Come on. No, all of us, we are together. We are one family. <laughs> and we are one family. Bring your own. Come and pour. Then just name in, just name all of them. Bring your own common pour. If we finish pouring this and mix it, what are we going to have? Oh, what are we going to have? Somebody say concussion. Can you see it? Somebody say poison. Can you see it? Can you? Uh, it's not me that answered it. Though. Now you answer. So when we mix everything to have one spirit, it won't be spirit. It will be concussion. It cannot be spirit. It will be poison. Yes, sir. Go to read read Revelation sixteen thirteen. Every one of them were producing frogs. Turn to your friend, tell him which spirit are you producing? Ask him, tell him what, what are you releasing here? What are you releasing? Oh my god, we must do it seriously. Say which one are you releasing? In the day of the supernatural, we must release the same spirit. We must be releasing the same spirit. And finally. I saw that the power, the, the, that spiritual power, secret of spiritual power I found here is the mouth. Someone say mouth. mouth. Someone say mouth. mouth. That's another secret of spiritual power here. The voice. Three unclean spirits coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth. I, I, I said to the Bible, why are you repeating the mouth? You could have just, it's, it's still correct English if you say, out of the mouth of the dragon, beast, and false prophet. Am I correct? So why are you repeating mouth? When the Bible is talking like this, he wants you to pay attention. Yes, sir. He wants to catch your attention to mouth. I mean, in one verse, mouth was said three times. Will you just read it and pass? Mouth is important. So look at your friend, tell him your mouth is important. I can't hear you. Say in the supernatural. Tell your friend, say in the supernatural. Your mouth is important. They say that a closed mouth is what? Closed destiny. Utterance is what you need. A great and effectual door has been opened unto us. Many are our adversary. But pray that utterance be given unto me. I thought he would say pray that the Holy Ghost fire would destroy them. He said no. I thought he would say pray for Holy Ghost fire to come. No. He said this, these adversaries are many. But pray that utterance will be given. So, so pastor, man of God, if they are fighting you, pray to have hotter messages. The more they fight, you pray to have more supernatural messages. 
you keep on preaching supernatural messages, people are getting healed, people are getting transformed, the people fighting you will get tired. They will fight and fight and fight themselves into irrelevance. Somebody shout, yeah! Somebody say, my mouth can never be silenced. Somebody say, in this season, my voice shall never be silenced. You believe it shout aloud, yes! Yesterday, God was speaking to me in the realm of the spirit as we were ministering about a woman. A young woman, I don't know her. But from the way I saw in the spirit, the Lord had a, it's a channel of grace that is going to flow from this woman's family. From her parents' home. There's an inheritance. There is a divine mandate of God that ought to follow her from her father's house. Which she is yet to carry. Oh, I don't, the, the way God revealed it to me yesterday, it was like he has blessed her father's house. Can you hear me? That God has blessed her father's house. That what is her portion as a portion in destiny from her father's house? Even though she seems to be married. Because what I'm saying is like she's married. That, but what is their portion in her father's house as destiny provision to fulfill her mandate has been released. And that, that, uh, that, that a word can be declared. So I began to declare a word on Abia. When, even when I went back to the room, I began to pray. As I had time and retired, I started praying. When I started praying, I understood it better. And it looked as if the woman I saw, and while I was praying for her, I saw another woman by her side, and they look alike. And I was asking God, what is this? And he said, it looks like they are twin. As if they are twin. I was praying for a woman, I heard Doris. So I spoke over her. Is there anybody here like that? If you are talking, it means you are aware. Are you aware? Anybody like that? I want to pray for the person. Eh? There is a Doris. She's a twin. She's a twin. I want to pray for her. Is she here? The husband okay you are the husband are you a priest yes sir. you're a priest is your wife doris and she's a twin then it's her then there is greatness in your home and i want to activate something today there's a portion of god in her What is that? See you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is she around? You will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I am mortal. Oh, oh, oh. I am mortal. Oh, oh, oh. I am mortal. I am mortal. I want to speak over her, even if she's not here. I think it is because of. This is morning hours, right? Was she here? There's a little child. There's a little child I was I, I was talking about. You were telling me about yesterday. Mirabel, right? Very far. Yeah, distance is not a barrier. But we we'll speak. What the Lord is laying in my spirit, the way I perceive it, you know, it's by perception. These things are things that come to reality with process and time. There is, there is a fruitfulness that God is going to through her and her twin sister release in their various families. There's a fruitfulness. There's a dimension I want to unlock in those two ladies because I could identify something about their life in the spirit. And we're going to pray. Who is Timothy?
Do you know? Okay. Let us pray now. Brethren, please close your eyes. We need to be, we need to do this quickly. Young man, on white. Yes, come. No, 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 no. White and red. Are you married? Where is she? This is Doris. God is unveiling something in life. Please stand behind her. Us has come. Come. By your spirit, oh God, and your mercy. Another sister, come. Come and help them. Join two hands. Sisters, don't go towards the, the pillar. A fulfillment. I feel I should lay my hand on her. Please, few minutes. Kim. I just feel I should lay my hand on her. Suffer my food to me. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full. Oh, oh. you are more than you are all of God. I am more than you are. Lord is also asking me to release this same mantle of ministry upon my life on two boys in his house in our house yes. two boys how many you have children you have two boys Daniel huh? hey. oh, bring them bring them for me I want to lay hands on them two boys it's an impartation I need to do this dimension, please, just don't worry. Be in the spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Where are they? You will not suffer my food to be Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Hold him. Help him. We are your servants. Here is my brother, my fellow servant in the same fire. Lord, I hold hands with him as a colleague, as one, as a brother. Together, we fight the same battle on the same front as clergymen. And today, I say, that all the harvest reserved in the realm of the spirit is hereby released and the grace to fight higher and move in higher realms for higher realms for higher realms stay with him stay with him hold him stay with him come join stay with him. grace to operate in higher realms everyone who is a priest please lift up your hand let us ask god for grace i i ask him for grace every day Asking for grace every day, everyone. Who will not suffer my food to be moved? I carry your breath. Your mind is so full of me. You are all. You are. I'm just a God bless you. And you are. Let 
us pray. Let us pray. Just, just hold her. I'm coming back to her. Stay with her. I'm coming to her. Father, these two young men shall become a voice in their generation. Hold her, hold her. Many other children shall see great things because these children existed. There is a fire in the heavens that will visit families and homes through this conference. So I release this impartation upon you, sons, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Anyone here waiting for a breaking forth? The Spirit of the Lord brings an opening over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke death. I say, I rebuke death. I rebuke death in the land. I rebuke death in the name of Jesus.